Hi, this is Mr. Morrow, and I am going to show you the getting started steps for the RetroTINK 4K, as well as showing you everything that comes in the box. The RetroTINK 4K is an advanced scaler, so it's very recommended that you read the RetroTINK 4K wiki and that you also um, watch other videos or read the rest of the wiki so that you can get the best sense of what all the options on the RetroTINK 4K can do, as there are a lot of them. In this video, I am going through um, the inputs of the RetroTank 4K, showing you what's in the box, as well as showing you how to get started with a few simple steps. It's going to follow the RetroTank 4K wiki exactly, so you can go ahead and follow with that. Um, the first thing we, I want to talk about is what is, comes in the box when you receive a RetroTank 4K. And the first thing is going to be the unit itself. The unit itself um, comes with a bunch of inputs. It also comes very nicely in a plastic bag for storage if you'd like. The next thing you want to see is the remote. You will need the remote to use all of the settings on the RetroTINK 4K. There is only one button on the unit itself that you can use, and that is only for using safe mode as well as for doing updates when the unit is turned off. Next thing you're going to want to take a look at is the SD card reader. These come with one so that you can manage profiles on the RetroTank 4K as well as other files as well. Then you're going to get a USB-C cable. It comes with a very normal USB-C cable. It, is, it will probably be rated for data and for power. However, you will only use it for power. Um, the RetroTank 4K doesn't have any data function to it yet unlike the RetroTank 5X. And finally, inside of the unit itself, you are going to have an SD card. Um, if this is also, um, the, or rather the unit should come with an SD card, and even if it doesn't, you can go ahead and use any SD card that is 32 gigabytes or lower. Um, I'm using a micro SD card because this is my own personal SD card that I'm using, but you can go ahead and use a full size SD card. So now that we're back on the unit, let's go ahead and do a tour of everything, of all the ports that it has, starting with the front. And the simplest ports right behind this door, a sliding door, you are going to have S-Video and composite inputs. And then you're going to have left, uh, right and left speakers, red and white respectively. If your console uh, maxes out at S video or composite, you might want to take a look behind this door. Going to the right, we have the RetroTank 4K SCART port. SCART port is, a, is intended to be a Euro SCART port, not a JP21 port. It is highly recommended that you do not use JP21. In fact, it will not work. Um, and the on the sides of the SCART port are going to be two screw terminals. These are going to be used to make sure that your SCART cable is kept taut in the RetroTINK 4K. If you didn't know, um, modern SCART port manufacturers are, uh, do create loose SCART ports. If your SCART cable feels loose in any SCART port on modern hardware, it is because they probably got the part from the same company and they are all loose. Now, one thing that you didn't know, you might not know about this SCART port, is that it is not just for RGB. It is also, it will also take, sorry, it not just, doesn't just take RGBS, it also takes RGSB, which is sync on green. It also takes YPBPR component. It also takes S-Video, where Y goes into the sync port and C goes into the, uh, the red port and the red cable. And finally, it does also take composite. It takes composite on the RGB's red port as well as a composite port that is part of the SCART spec. Turning this around, um, starting from the left, we have component in, and that is going to include the right and left audio. Then it is going to include red, blue, and green ports, and these also have multiple uses. It is not just Y, PBPR for component. It will also do 
sync on green because that uses three cables. Um, so Y on the component cable goes into green, PB goes into blue, and PR goes into red, where RGSB would go into red, green, and blue respectively. After that, you have a reset button on the, on the unit. This is the only button on the entire unit. Everything else is controlled through the remote. And this button is specifically used to either enter safe mode when the unit is turned on um, so that it can go ahead and output 480p in case your display is unable to see uh, 1440p or 1080p, but you do, it is most likely able to use 480p. The Audio in is right next to that. This is a 3.5 millimeter stereo audio jack. Um, and there's really nothing else special that can be said about that. The VGA import is a standard VGA import um, or D sub if you use that terminology or HD15 if you use that terminology. It does take the standard RGB HV that you would expect to come from this port, but this port, just like the SCART port, does have multiple uses. You can plug in RGBS, RGSB, YPBPR, S Video, YC, and composite CVBS in the same ways that you would wire it into the SCART port. So, um, so. YPBPR would go into green, blue, and red, respectively. RGSB would go into uh, red, green, and blue, respectively. If you're using RGBS, there are RGB and sync, for which would also, and the sync would be the same as the horizontal sync for RGBHV. And of course, it takes S video on green, I'm oh, sorry, it takes S video on green as well as red. So uh, green for Y and C for red. And finally, it does take composite input on both red and a dedicated composite input as well. Right next to that is going to be an optical audio in port. This is going to be your first port that can take in surround sound, five channels. The uh, port will also take, it basically takes any optical audio input uh, through Toslink. And then to the right of that is going to be the S, sorry, the HDMI out port or digital video out. And that is included, included, it's going to say 2.0 4K 60. 4K 60 hertz is going to be the maximum, uh, maximum resolution refresh rate that you're going to be able to use. You may be able to use um, something like a uh, four by three aspect ratio with 70 hertz, but that is a little bit more advanced and you will need some additional tutorial for that. The next to that is going to be the digital video in port. This is a maximum of HDMI 2.0 with a maximum resolution of 1080p 60. Um, you can use something a little higher than that, but it is not recommended and no, the you cannot pass through 4K through the RetroTank 4K because the maximum input is HDMI 4.0, uh, sorry, 1.4, apologies, and that maxes out at over, um, that maxes out, that does not allow for 4K 60. Finally, to the right of that is going to be a USB-C power port. It says five volt, two amps, because it is highly recommended that you power the RetroTINK 4K with a power source that is five volts and at least two amps. Most of the uh, support questions that come that come to the RetroTINK 4K Discord uh, do ask, uh, sorry, do are solved by powering it with an appropriate five volt, two amp power source. On the bottom, there's just a sticker that tells you the model number and the input that is required to power it. And on the right side, there is nothing. Going back to the front, as I mentioned, there is an SD card slot. Um, any SD card, 32 gigabytes and lower, is going to be your best bet. Formatted in FAT32. And that takes care of the that takes care of the small tour of the front of the retro tank. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we are going to start it up. Okay, so now that we're here, here is a quick guide to turning on the retro tank and getting started. The first thing you want to do is plug in the output to the output of the RetroTank 4K. 
Next, you want to plug in any input that you're going to use. I am going to use this analog pocket with HDMI input. Um, otherwise, I would may I would have used um, SCART for maybe a Super Nintendo or a PlayStation. And then finally, you want to plug in the power port USB-C to the retro tank. If everything on the unit is good to go and you have not changed anything since uh, from the SC card that you have received, you will want to plug the power port in and it should immediately start powering up and it will get you to, and if you have a 4K display or a display that accepts 4K, you should immediately start to see uh, something in the signal that will let you know you can move forward. Okay, now that this is turn uh, now that everything is plugged in, let's go ahead and turn the unit on with the remote. It does take a few seconds for the unit to turn on. However, as I mentioned, everything needs to be done with the remote. And the first thing you will see is that when the unit turns on, everything starts with the HDMI port. Uh, the default input is going to be through the HDMI port. Um, so normally if you wanted to use anything else, you would press the input button on your remote and then make your way down to one of the options that you would be using. But as I mentioned, I am using uh, a HDMI to show you how to get started. So we can go with that. And the RetroSync 4K will tell you that it is on HDMI and the uh, resolution that it is currently receiving. That basically covers everything in regards to the RetroTank 4K getting started. Um, if you were using a 1080p or a or some other resolution, you would want to find the resolutions near the bottom of the remote and press one of those. So if I wanted to, I could output 1080p from the RetroTank 4K. It takes a second for my for my capture card to catch up, but there it is. It is currently outputting 1080p. Um, if you now that you are here, you can also go down to any of press the output button on the remote and then go down to any of these outputs. Um, and it does support up to 1080p 240, but on the menu it supports 1080p 120 you may have to add additional files to move forward and in the output you have different options to output hdr um, change the sync and also vrr and deep color as well that does wrap up this tutorial you this is everything that you need to know in regards to getting started with the retro tank 4k you plug everything in turn everything on make sure that you're getting the right output um, so just make sure that it is compliant with your display and finally, you select your input. That's going to cover everything, so have a great day.